Okay, so today is divided into three sections. And you'll notice that chapter three quiz is open and closes at 11 p.m. tonight. Don't try to take it until after about 11 a.m. this morning. I'm going to close it again. I, want to, I did not review the questions. I was supposed to uh, do that yesterday. That was on my schedule for yesterday, but the doctor called me and said, you have to go get uh, platelets and blood. So I spent yesterday from 3 in the afternoon until 10 o'clock at night sitting in a chair over at Lindsborg Community Hospital having platelets first for the first hour and then blood for the next four hours poured into my little Hickman catheter. And it was really boring, but I also didn't have internet and I didn't have any way to get things. And so I did not review to make sure that the questions were better. Then the questions in quiz two where there were several questions that made no sense whatsoever. So Michael Feldman runs a program called What Do You Know? And he he starts this quiz program by saying uh, poorly worded uh, and incorrect questions are par for the course. Anybody who is a stickler for truth should get their own radio show. So there you go. Um, but I want to make sure that they're better this time. Uh, and I want to make sure that we've got questions about, uh, about that process of listening that I outlined in the letter of listening because I sometimes have those in, sometimes not. Today, though, we want to take a look in the text. Jess and Shelby are going to lead us through text here. Jess and Shelby are going to lead us through um, note taking. I want to take you through, I'm going to point you at at his uh, model of listening, but we're not going to take much time for that. I want to talk about barriers and removing them. And then we'll have Shelby just talk about note-taking. Then we're going to put that note-taking to, uh, to a practical experience. We're going to watch a speech and you take notes. Okay? What you'll do with your notes then is up to you. On Tuesday, we will take a quiz on that speech for the first time. We will take that we will take another quiz on that speech without viewing the speech again a couple of weeks from now. So we'll see if you if you get not only comprehensive, if you're not only are comprehensive, but if your comprehension lasts for a couple of weeks. So, James, would you do me a favor and close the door before Dr. Pig comes and closes it on us? Thank you, sir. <clears throat> I've also fallen a little bit behind on responding to papers. Um, I'm in the seas. I had to go to the hospital. That's my excuse. Well, I, no, these are not graded. These are you get. Remember, you get my comments, so that in your editing, you become a better editor. You write the next. You write the bigger paper based on what you've got, making the corrections I suggest and expanding it. So the work goes in the writing tabs and like writing one, writing two, writing three. It just, has a little it just credit, credit, no credit, okay. credit, no credit. And, and you can't use a paper that you haven't submitted once. Your paper for a grade has to have been submitted once and you have to have gotten comments back. Okay? I'm glad you, glad you got me to make sure that I clarify that. I want to make that absolutely clear. <coughs> uh, let me also say, and this is for those who didn't make it and, and who are just going to end up watching the video, that uh, following class today I will put the the video of, uh, of the speeches on reserve in the library. Uh, you can watch it in the library. It's a, a seven minute speech. All right, so let's take a look at listening barriers. If you would go to page 59, problem causing listening responses and how to correct them.
Here are only a few examples of listening responses that can pre present effective and satis satisfying communication. Okay, static listener gives no feedback, remains relatively motionless, reveals no expression. How do you give feedback when you're listening? What are your common ways of giving feedback? We'll come to this again in interpersonal. In interpersonal listening, you nod your head. What do you say? Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. What happens if you just do this, Brad, if you just do this? Are they right? Most of the time. Yeah, most of the time. Is it okay to not listen? Maybe sometimes. Some of the times. When is it okay to not listen, Jeremiah? Okay, Emily, when's it okay to not listen? When someone's ranting. When someone's ranting. Just let them go. They, they, they don't really need you. They're just ranting. Mm -hmm. They're just ranting. When else is it okay to not listen, James? Either the Jameses. I'll, get, I'll take from both of you. Mm -hmm. uh, negative influence, maybe. When somebody's being really negative. You know, you, you get around those negative people. You don't want to listen to them. Other James? Uh, when it yeah, when, when it gets boring, but what about when the other person is just being a, a jackass? They're not ranting, they're just being a jackass. Don't pay attention to them. Don't, stay away from that kind of negativity. Stay away from negativity. It's okay to not listen, just tune that out. Okay, monotonous feedback giver seems responsive, but the responses never vary. Regardless of what is said, the response is the same. Gentlemen, with your girlfriends. Does it ever get that way? She's talking to you and you go, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. Exactly. Exactly. She talks about her makeup, or she talks about, oh, she said this, but she did this, and then, oh my gosh, she just did the waiter. room. like, really? Okay, I'm trying to watch a game right now. Ooh, she's so talking, so I'm just like, whoa. You are so bad. There are times when they just. I'm so glad for your honesty. It's exa You're exactly right. Women pay no attention to the television. Okay, well. Unless it's something they want. It's not just when you're watching a game, it's like you're watching something that's really of interest to you. She comes in the room. Or if it's Xbox, they don't have no idea. Yeah, I would have no idea on that either. But they come in the room, you're, you're focused, right? You're focused on this thing. Especially when it's like two seconds left, down by two, going to shoot a three-pointer in North Carolina. And I'm like, oh. I don't, I'm not paying attention, I'm sorry. Exactly. Duke, North Carolina, that was a great game. No one. Okay, and she just starts to talk. So what do you do? Uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. You're not listening to me. That is correct. That is correct. Now, how do you fix that? How do you fix that? That's that's one way to do it. Now, don't be snarky. Be honest. Be honest, gentlemen, ladies. Be honest. This is taking my attention right now. It's real exciting. Can we wait, please? Understand that this is taking my attention. It's real exciting. And she says, my water just broke. No, you can't wait. Okay. Hey, Stephen. So context, situation it varies. Uh, also pay attention if she's coming in really angry. Yeah, you definitely pick up on that vibe. You better, and this better be more important than that. Okay? But there are points at which you can say, and you can honestly say to one another, I will listen better if we don't have a distraction. My wife pays no attention to things that I enjoy. If it's something that she enjoys, she's focused on it, on the television. She's not a very television person. We 
I'm a huge television fan. So I, you know what I have in my house? I have a DVR. So when she wants to talk, I just go pause. Okay, huh? Go. What you want to talk about? I don't miss anything. I don't miss anything. And you know the other thing? Even if you turn it off, you really don't miss anything. This is actually more important than the television. Nobody realizes. We try to talk to them while they're watching the soap operas, they're watching the news, watching the Desperate shows. Housewives. God knows we're going to get earful and we're sitting Kate, are you house? Are you a Desperate Housewives fan? Yeah. yeah. Uh, like Wisteria Lane. I love it. Wisteria Lane is going to be leaving us. I know, it's very sad. It's very sad. I'm still watching a Hulu, though. I'm a I'm a big pop culture fan, so oh, hey, turn on the TV. Yeah, yeah. All right, so so when when guys when men and women communicate, there's often that kind of monotonous feedback that indicates that you're not really paying attention. You must end that and actually pay attention. Understand that there are times when that's going to be difficult and you're going to have to make a sacrifice. But do pay attention. Uh, eye avoider, preoccupied <coughs> listener, we've been talking about that. The waiting listener listens for a cue to take over the speaking turn. All right, big mouths, talkers, constant talkers. Stephen, raise your hand. <laughs> Stephen, raise your hand. Constant talkers. We love to talk. We love to talk. Okay. Okay. Often, bad listening. I know. Bad listening is we're not listening for what you have to say. We're listening for you to tell us it's time for us to talk. It's a bad habit for listeners. Kate, be honest. Do you find yourself doing that? Well, like the turn, turn and look at well, Taryn. Turn and look at Taryn. Taryn. <laughs> okay, so do I. <laughs> so do I. It is a problem for those of us who love to talk, Kate. Okay? It's a problem for those of us who love to talk. And you know I love to run my mouth. <laughs> Steven, do you find yourself doing that? Boy. You're just waiting for the chance, for the chance where you get the cue and it's your turn to talk. Every now and then. Mm -hmm. I'm a balanced speaker. Uh, uh, Steven, look at Scott. I know you're not talking. When he gets started, <laughs> oh, you ought to catch him when he gets started. Well, I know when he gets started, but... But, but I'm not looking for the cue. Yeah. I'm not looking for the cue either. I'm a, I flow naturally into yeah. the conversation. Okay. I'm looking for the cue. We who... <laughs> folks, I'm the listening. We who have... Who are so talkers. Today, huh? We who are talkers. We have to work on that. I am 62 years old. I have been working on this for 50 years when I was first made aware of the fact that I wasn't paying attention. I was just looking for a chance to talk. I was a teenager. And it was at a, it was at a church youth camp. And I was made aware of my bad habit. I have been working on it ever since. This, this is something you just keep working on. You get better at it. You get better at it, but you gotta be aware of it to do it. So what can you do? You can, you can listen more carefully for all that the hearer has to say, both the, the uh, words and the nonverbals. Don't jump in right away. Don't, don't complete others' thoughts. Um, it's a good list of, of responses and how to correct them. What it doesn't talk about is what we, what I want to get back to, and I'm, I'm going to go on to listening barriers here. What it doesn't talk about is that fundamental thing that you've got to have as a listener. You have got to have the attitude that what the other person has to say is actually worth hearing. Even the dull, the ignorant, and the outcast 
are worth your time. Because like you, they are human beings. And you will be surprised if you'll just decide this is worth my attention, how much you will gain. That's on a very personal level, on a very practical level. You've got to decide when you go to class, this is important. It is not all equally important, but it is important. The biggest barrier to listening is our attitude. So we've got to, we've got to work on our attitude. And we have to work on our attitude just as we have to work on our bad habits continually. Um, okay. If you look at uh, page 59, then I'm going to get off of this. And we're going to get, we're going to get our note taking up. Biases and prejudices. Wonderful statement uh, I heard last weekend which I'm going to paraphrase, um, was on a news program. Somebody talked about the Talmud. Talmud is a book of commentary on what we call the Old Testament, on the Jewish scriptures. And she said, the Talmud says, we do not hear what is. We hear what we are. Our biases and prejudices Prejudices easily get in the way of our hearing what actually is being said. We hear what we want to hear instead. One way to become a more active listener and to end that problem of only hearing what we are and not hearing what is said is to learn to take better notes. So, Jess, Shelby, you ready to lead us through a discussion of note-taking? Oh, All right. it is their turn today. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. Woo.